Analysis from Goldman Sachs. Five Chinese industries are in serious crisis. Buyer terminates transaction. Evergrande Auto loses last life-saving money. Alibaba is willing to pay $3.1 billion to settle U.S. lawsuit. Mainland investors may benefit from it. Analysis from Goldman Sachs. Five Chinese industries are in serious crisis. Goldman Sachs Group of the United States analyzed the supply and demand trends of solar photovoltaic panels, lithium-ion batteries, air conditioners, electric vehicles, EVs, construction machinery, steel, and power semiconductors in China. Among these, except for steel and power semiconductors, the other five industries have fallen into global overcapacity. An excess production capacity will lead to many consequences. When supply significantly exceeds demand, technology dumping or downsizing will inevitably occur, potentially leading to instability and crisis. Japanese media reported that the most serious overcapacity is in solar photovoltaic panels. China's supply capacity has reached 1,036 gigawatts, which is 1.9 times the global demand of 533 gigawatts in 2023. It is expected that China's supply capacity will continue to exceed global demand beyond 2024. Solar photovoltaic panels are a typical equipment industry. The larger the production scale, the lower the unit cost. This was once a field where Japanese companies stood out, but because they could not keep up with the investment competition of Chinese companies, Japanese firms were forced to withdraw from the market. China's global market share has now reached 86%. China's lithium-ion batteries and electric vehicles, which lead the world in technological competition, are also in overcapacity. China's electric vehicle production capacity has reached 1.2 times the global demand for electric vehicles. The supply capacity of lithium batteries is 3.3 times domestic demand and 1.5 times global demand. To cope with the confrontation between China and the United States and increase production capacity in strategic areas, China began promoting expanded investment in high-end manufacturing industries such as electric vehicles and artificial intelligence, AI, in 2023. In this situation, companies have actively invested. Local governments also support these investments by selling land use rights at low prices and providing tax incentives and subsidies. According to estimates by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, China issued subsidies totaling about 170 billion US dollars between 2009 and 2022. Buyer terminates transaction, Evergrande Auto loses last life-saving money. On the evening of October 25th, China Evergrande and Evergrande Auto both issued announcements, stating they had received notices from potential sellers and have decided to stop all discussions with potential buyers regarding possible share transfers they have decided not to proceed with any potential share transfers. China Evergrande announced that the potential seller is continuing to seek possible buyers and explore feasible opportunities to sell the potential seller's shares in the new energy vehicle group. However, as of the date of this announcement, no agreement, arrangement, or understanding has been reached with any potential buyer, nor has any definite opportunity been found. To outsiders, the withdrawal of the potential buyer is undoubtedly adding insult to injury for Evergrande Auto, which is deeply in debt crisis. Daily economic news suggests this may indicate that Evergrande Auto has lost its last life-saving straw. Notably, this is not the first time a potential investor in Evergrande Auto has exited Midway. In August last year, Evergrande Auto announced it had received the first strategic investment of 500 million U.S. dollars from Newton Group a listed company backed by the UAE Sovereign Fund. An additional 600 million renminbi in transitional funds was expected in succession from five working days after the announcement. The proposed transaction between the two parties was set to be completed in the fourth quarter of 2023, after which Newton Group's shareholding in Evergrande Auto would account for 27.5% of the total common shares issued after the expansion. To many, this investment from Newton Group was viewed as life-saving money for Evergrande Auto, which has suffered losses for years. However, on the evening of October 8, 2023, 
Evergrande Auto announced that due to changes at China Evergrande, strategic investor Newton Group had suspended its transitional funding support for the company and was renegotiating the necessary adjustments to the proposed transaction plan. On April 5th of this year, the strategic investment agreement between Evergrande Auto and Newton Group was officially terminated. According to a Yi Kai report, an announcement issued by Evergrande Auto in May indicated the company might soon secure a new white knight. At that time, Evergrande Auto said that its issued 29% shares would be immediately acquired by a third-party buyer, potential buyer. As per the announcement, the potential buyer and seller would sign a credit agreement. The potential buyer would provide Evergrande Auto with a credit line to fund the continued operation and development of Evergrande Auto Group's electric vehicle business. Previously, according to statistics from the Chinese Communist Party government, in September, the profits of China's industrial enterprises above designated size fell by 27% year-on-year. On October 27th, official economic data released by the Chinese Communist Party showed that in September, the profits of China's industrial enterprises above designated size fell by 27.1% year-on-year, marking the second consecutive month of decline. The National Bureau of Statistics of the Communist Party of China reported on its official website on the 27th that the profits of industrial enterprises above designated size fell by 27.1% year-on-year in September, an increase of 9.3 percentage points from August. Additionally, the asset liability ratio of industrial enterprises above designated size rose by 0.1 percentage point to 57.7% at the end of September. Alibaba is willing to pay $3.1 billion to settle U.S. lawsuit. Mainland investors may benefit from it. Alibaba Group, the Chinese e-commerce giant, has agreed to pay $433.5 million U.S. dollars, about 3.09 billion RMB to settle a class action lawsuit filed by U.S. investors but denies any fault or liability. Some lawyers say Chinese investors may also get a piece of the pie. On October 26, Beijing time, October 25, U.S. time, Alibaba Group issued an announcement disclosing that the group had reached a settlement in a class action lawsuit filed by U.S. investors. The announcement stated that the company's move was intended to avoid the costs and disruptions of further litigation. The settlement is subject to several conditions, including court approval, and does not constitute an admission or determination that there is any legal basis for the claims raised in the lawsuit. According to public information, in August this year, Alibaba's second quarter financial report listed a provision of 3.145 billion renminbi, about 433 million US dollars. It is estimated that this money is intended to address investor class action lawsuits. This is a securities class action lawsuit filed by some U.S. investors against Alibaba in the U.S. Southern District Court of New York. The settlement document shows that the plaintiffs in this case are all individuals and entities that purchased or otherwise acquired Alibaba's American depository shares between November 13, 2019 and December 23, 2020, inclusive. The plaintiffs accused Alibaba of exclusive behavior referring to monopolistic practices, but the company did not promptly inform investors of the relevant risks. The plaintiffs also argued that the statements made by Ant Group's initial public offering, IPO, were materially false and alleged that Alibaba's stock price was artificially inflated due to false and misleading statements, causing economic losses to investors. During the case, the court rejected the plaintiffs' challenge to Alibaba's statement regarding Ant Group's IPO, However, the two sides fiercely disputed whether Alibaba had engaged in monopolistic practices and misrepresentation. After several rounds of court mediation, the parties finally reached a settlement agreement. Notably, the settlement document released by Alibaba stated that the antitrust claims involve complex economic and regulatory issues in the e-commerce market and China's antitrust laws, making the relevant claims a major challenge. Regarding Alibaba's agreement to pay nearly 3.1 billion yuan to settle the class action lawsuit, Yu Yunting, senior partner of Shanghai Debang Law Firm, analyzed in an interview with mainland media. From Alibaba's perspective, the company has already been penalized by the state administration for market regulation in China. If the litigation continues, Alibaba faces a higher risk of compensation. From the plaintiff's perspective, the claim process is lengthy, 
and significant evidence is needed from China. Additionally, proving the causal relationship for major losses is challenging, and the plaintiff also risks failure in their claim. These factors ultimately led the parties to choose settlement. Yu Yunting said that if conditions are met, Chinese investors in Alibaba's U.S. stocks are also expected to share in the settlement. Typically, after completing the settlement process or receiving Alibaba's settlement funds, the law firm representing the lawsuit will announce it on its website. At that time, investors can complete forms and submit documentation via the website, and they will receive compensation for losses after passing the review. During this period, investors can monitor relevant email notifications from securities institutions or log in to the law firm's website for updates.